Good morning or good evening, whatever the case may be. We're glad that you're with us for another Sunday edition of the Waves of Hope Chapel Service. And as uh, things roll on, we just want to remind you that God is in control, that the Lord knows your situation. He has not abandoned you, and he will make a way. And so I want you to be encouraged today that um, that we haven't forgotten about you. Believe me, we <laughs> we think we, we think about uh, all the seafarers out there all the time. Uh, you're in our prayers. You're in our thoughts. And uh, we want you to be encouraged. And please take us up on our offer that if there's anything that we can pray for you, and that goes for anybody in our listening audience, that uh, please message us through the ministry Facebook page. Uh, don't leave a comment in the in the, the video. Um, you can, but uh, anyway, we'd rather it be more private, and then uh, we will pray for you. And uh, we're planning on several prayer opportunities coming up, and uh, we would love for you to be involved if that's something you're interested in. Uh, it's a Zoom call that we do on Thursdays, and we can include you in as well. Just uh, send us a message, and we will let you know. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for the rain that we're having here locally and just the refreshing that it brings, Father. But uh, we know for those who were affected by the last round of storms that the flooding was unbelievable. Father, we pray for you just to sustain them, that you would provide for their needs, that you would encourage them day by day. Lord, uh, the, there's problems going on all over the world. And I pray that you would meet people's needs, that they would have a sense of your presence, of your provision, of your love. We thank you, Lord, that you are real, that you are true, that we can turn to you. Thank you for your unfailing love. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just bless us with your presence this morning. I pray for Jeannie as she sings, uh, just that you would help us all to enter into worship through that, and we pray for Richard, that you would speak to us through his words, and thank you for, for just this opportunity to reflect on you, draw us closer to you, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, here comes Jean. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, in the next few days in our study of Exodus, we're going to see uh, God as the great defender of his children, the Israelites. And I wanted to read you one verse from John 1, 12. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So if we are his children, he is also our great defender who goes before us to fight for us when we give him the battle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got tickled with, with uh, Mark knocking over the tambourine. <laughs> You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory. You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. Your love becomes the greatest defense. You lead me from the dry wilderness. And all I did was pray. All I did was worship. All I did was bow down. All I did was stay still. See you. 
more I do, where my heart must seek to find your truth, your grace becomes the shade that I'm living in. You restore my hope and my faith again, and all I did was pray. All I did was worship, all I did was bow down, all I did was stay still. Amen. Jeannie, that's one of those songs where in the quietness of the moment, of a moment of a, I don't know, sometime during the day where it's just, everything's just quiet and you're just taking in those words. I guess sometime before, just before you go to bed or maybe it's around a campfire. Those are beautiful words, beautiful singing. Thank you. I had my eyes closed and was just listening to the words and just getting caught up in the uh, worship and, and praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How are you doing? How was your evening or your day, if, you're, if this day is coming to a close? And for you who are just starting, what are your expectations? What are your plans for today? Do you have any? And if you do, do you think they'll be fulfilled? Do you think the things will happen as you want or think they will happen? Are your expectations met? Will they be met? That's kind of the, the topic or the theme, the direction I want to take today's lesson. Um, we have a tendency to make plans, but um, God has a tendency also to change those plans. Proverbs 16.9 says, The heart of the man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Again, we all have these ideas, these expectations, um, the direction we want to take our life. Uh, and uh, God says, uh, I got a bigger plan for you. I got a better way of doing it. And as we look at, at uh, the Israelites now leaving Israel, I'm sorry, leaving Egypt, no longer slaves, this mass group of people trekking across desert land to the promised land, um, they... They're thinking, this is going to take place, this is going to happen, it's going to be in this time period, and God says, uh-uh. Who would have guessed that uh, last March, last February, that something called a COVID-19 pandemic would impact and affect us and literally change our lives forever? We're still 
trying to make sense of it all. We're still trying to plan and coordinate, make life as, as normal and as comfortable as possible. But things like pandemics and other situations and scenarios don't always do that, do they? But God sees all, knows all, and is in charge of all. Let's read, starting in uh, chapter 13, verse 17, which says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. It's always, if you were to look at a map of uh, northern Africa, Egypt, and on the way to where Israel is today, the promised land, you would think they would take the direct route along the waterway, along uh, the Mediterranean Sea. God did not take them that way. I mean, hey, it's the easiest way. It's the most uh, fertile way where there's obviously going to be food and water, uh, the path of least resistance. But God didn't take them that way. He told, told them, he took them a different way, uh, a little bit more where the terrain was a little bit more rugged, um, where um, uh, it was going to be very difficult and last a lot longer than the uh, Israelites would have ever began or imagined. Now, does God know what he's doing? Is God's plan better than your or my plan? This is something we're seeing revealed here the Israelites are learning and something we need to learn as well. Again, Proverbs 69, 16, verse 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. You see, the Lord knew that along that easy route was Egyptian outposts. They still controlled that area, and they were going to be met with difficulty of, of, and obstructions that the Egyptians constantly throw their ways. God knew this. I'm going to guess the Israelites did not. But again, their perception is that is the best way to go. He did say, he tells us the reason God does. It says, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. You've got to remember that these individuals were slaves for 400 years. They had no rank and file. They were not a nation yet. They were becoming a nation uh, as it goes on to say, when they did leave, they left in orderly ranks. God is beginning the process of molding and shaping them into the nation that they would be. But they're not there yet. Kind of sort of like a, a, a father or mother as we guide and direct our children through their adolescence, through their teen years, and into adulthood. We understand. We know, in many ways, we're not perfect, what's best for them. They are still children, immature in life in general, what's out there, etc. God is like that with you and I today. And there's where that trust factor needs to come in. Israel need to trust them with their walk of their, of, or their journey of life. And we need to do the same thing. We don't understand all the hows and whys, but we need to trust God knows all the hows and whys. It goes on to say in verse 19, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under Solomon, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Truly a man, uh, Joseph, a man of great faith. And I want to come back to him a little bit later. Let's keep reading. Verse 20, So they took their journey from Sukkoth and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of, of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So can you only imagine as these, these uh, close to, I think, a million people are leaving Egypt on their journey, rough as it may be, that God, during the day, has, has this pillar, this cloud, this, it, 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 it's called a pillar because it, I guess it, in, the, in the Hebrew it really looks like a pillar, straight up, very narrow, and they see it and they're following it. And then at night, when it's dark, there's this fire. 
God has told them, this is the direction I want you to go. Yeah, you may not completely understand why we're going that way, but I want you to know this. I will lead you, and I will be with you forever, every breathing second of your life, during the day and of the night. You know, we have, we have nine children. And again, go, I didn't plan that. God, God definitely had all that lined up. If he had told me uh, uh, when I first got married that you're going to have nine children, his plan, not mine, I would have went, what? That's not happening. But it did. And you know what? God's way is great because each one of them is a blessing in so many different ways. It would have been nice to have a few girls in the mix, eight boys and one girl, but hey, God knows better than I do. Amen? Right? Well, we had our, our youngest, our oldest, Josiah. Uh, he's now a full-grown man, has a family of his own. But when he was a little baby, when did baby start sitting up? Six months, four months? Five, six months. Five, six months, he was sitting up. And Darlene and I would play with him on the floor while he's playing with his blocks or whatever. And we'd be talking, and he's right there next to us. And he'd be preoccupied playing with his blocks. But then he would just, it was really weird. He was really the only one that ever did this. He would reach out to Darlene, my wife, and touch her. Almost to say, okay, you're there. I can go back to playing my blocks. And again, through the conversation, he'd repeat, he'd just, you just see his arm go over. Yep, she's there. And, and back to, to doing what he was doing. Um, God, this pillar of by uh, day and a fire by night is the same thing. Can you imagine that as, the, as, as these people are going, where are we going? Oh, God's there. Praise God. And then at night as they're around outside of their tents and they just look up, there's the fire. How comforting that must have been. How reassuring to know God was there with them. And he is with us if we would only just take the moment in time to reach out to him through his word, through prayer, through just seeing him in the simple small things of life. We have a tendency to get preoccupied and forget to reach out and say, oh, our God is with us. He was there all the time. What an awesome God we have. What an awesome God who serves us, loves us, wants to defend us, protect us, be with us, watch over us, guide us, direct us. If we only simply acknowledge his presence and that love. That's what's going on here. Okay, I don't know where, I, I kind of sort of know what the end result is, but I still don't understand how I'm going to get there. But God does, and I trust him with it. Pretty much is what's going on in the hearts and minds of the Israelites. And today should be going on in our hearts and minds as we are walking through this pandemic and overall life in general. Verse 14 goes on to read, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pi Haharoth between Migdal and the sea opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. I had, I've been talking to you about not knowing the direction God takes us or what situation or circumstance may affect us today, tomorrow, next year, etc. But God does give us some insights in his word. All we have to do is read it. And so we do, we do know how uh, the, the end of the story goes. We do know that uh, eternal life is before us. We do know that there are trials and tribulations that we will see. But what's really fascinating here is God actually tells Moses, um, this is where you're going to camp. And what's really amazing about this place, you got the Red Sea on one side, mountain ranges on both sides, and only the way you came in as a way out. And this is where you're going, I want you to camp. Oh, and by the way, Pharaoh's going to come and try to take you out. Hard stop. This is, this is scary. But life is scary. And he tells him, but don't fear. I've got this. A beautiful application for each and every one of us today, is it not? We live in a sinful world. We live in a world full of many temptations. There are so many uh, 
influences, so many different things that can get the best of us. God warns us. He tells us. It says here, Moses did it. Okay, I trust you, Lord. Which gets me back to that guy named Joseph. A real person with a strong testimony. A testimony of faith. 400 years ago, God told him and gave him a promise. Your people will go back to that land that you came from. The promised land. And he believed it. So much so that he said, don't bury my body. Put it in this tomb. Ready to go. And it's when God, whenever that time is, and that time will come, I want to be going with you. And Moses and the Israelites honored that. A man of faith. Life can be scary, but life can also be good, especially when you put your trust in God. Life can have its ups and downs. Life can have its roadblocks, its, its, its obstacles. But when you put your trust in the Lord, it doesn't seem scary anymore. Joseph had the faith. Moses obviously had the faith. And he knew what was in store for him in the future. And yet he kept putting one foot in the other, knowing God had it. A very valuable lesson for you and I to learn. Do you realize and recognize who the God that created us, the God I hope you serve, does for you that's faith that's hope that's trust that puts a smile on your face that gives you peace that passes all understanding and allows you to have a life even with its ups and downs to be full of joy think about that reflect upon that and let me leave you with one more verse out of John 16:33 just as Moses knew there was tribulation coming, you and I should expect, expect the same. But this is Jesus talking. I have said those things to you, that in me you may have peace. Amen. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Do you believe that? I do. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for your day. Let me pray for your family. Let me pray for your, your journey in this life. Precious Lord, I lift up our listening audience to you, asking that you, Lord, that you reve reveal yourself in so many different ways to each and every individual as they need it. Lord, as they call out and cry out to you, I have no doubts. It's a guarantee, Lord, that you will, you will overwhelm yourself with your presence. Lord, take your loving arms, wrap them around each individual within this listening audience and what's ever going on in, in their life, Lord, that uh, they would uh, reach out and feel your presence, that they would know you're right there, that they would take the time, too, to see, Lord, you working in their lives and give you the glory and honor and praise. Lord, as we go through this tribulation of a pandemic, so many uncertainties, so many distractions, so many uh, going off course in the, what we expected our journey or this year would be. But yet, Lord, we trust you with all the details, knowing full well, Lord, that this is all part of your plan, though we don't get it or understand it, that when it's all done, we will come forth as gold. We do know the end of the story, says those that believe Believe on your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, proclaim it, profess it, and have repented of their sins, will spend eternity with you. That is an awesome promise that you bestow upon us. And as Joseph, may we uh, uh, get it, understand it, and live by it as well. Proclaim it. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the journey. God bless you.